Hi there. We're going to shoot a little video about uh, maintenance and adjustments on the Kybe uh, hay balers for the walk behind tractors. A lot of this will apply to the Kybe hay balers for four wheel tractor mounting as well, which we don't stock here at Earth Tools, but we can order by special order. What we do stock, of course, is these ones for the walk behind tractors. Um, this is an older model Kybe hay baler, which is why it's red. All the ones on our website are shown as yellow, which they changed the color about six years ago. So this is one that's coming here for service. Good opportunity for you, us to uh, show you a few things about servicing. Uh, now I've got the side panel removed here. The side panel would normally be here, and it's held in place with a bunch of bolts, and uh, there's a little brace here on the side that holds it in as well. So good maintenance at least once a year with the Kai Baylors is to remove these braces. Take all the little bolts out, remove the side panels, and clean out everything on the inside of here because this is going to get full of hay and nasty. This one actually had a big mouse nest built up in here from sitting over the winter. Uh, we removed that already. This doesn't look too bad right now. I've seen these things virtually packed with hay after a, a, a hay baling season. So a little compressed air, a brush. It might be wrapped around. Get it out of there. The majority of problems we have with the kite bale are that people let these areas plug up. There's a side panel on both sides. They both should be removed and cleaned out. Uh, but the majority of problems we have is that people let these things build up with stuff and the hay will get into the timing mechanisms and cause misfires and mishaps and all kinds of uh, issues. So when all that's relatively clean, the next thing you want to do is yearly maintenance is uh, lubricate some, some key areas. There are points on this thing that are not lubricated automatically by the automatic lubrication system. This receptacle on the front is designed to receive some oil, dump oil in here. Some people use automatic transmission fluid, uh, 30 weight motor oil is fine. Some people use bar and chain oil, but any kind of oil is better than no oil. Uh, and this, this oiling system is activated whenever the bailing uh, chamber door shuts, it pushes a plunger and the plunger squirts out oil through oil lines onto the drive chains of the baler. Uh, here's one of the lines here that's oiling this main drive chain. It, it runs half of the rollers inside this baler. On the other side of this thing, we've got this side panel off as well. You can see here is the oiler mechanism right here that actually gets the plunger pushed by the door closing. It's got another oil line running uh, up here where it uh, shoots oil onto this drive chain. I don't have this side panel removed right now. But if I did, you could see there's a chain connecting all the rollers around this side, connecting all the little aluminum rollers that, that roll the hay. So that both drive chains are oiled every time the baler door closes. However, there's some other chains in here, 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 and here. There's a chain that drives the pickup wheel to pick the hay up off the ground. Those chains receive no lubrication. It was too congested in there for them to run additional oiling lines to those little chains. Besides, those chains aren't doing nearly as much work as the big chain. So once a year, when the side panels are off, these chains have to be lubricated. This is a chain and cable fluid. Uh, you don't want to use just a penetrating oil on these things. Actually, this is fluid film, which is a lanolin-based product. It sticks onto the product or onto the, what you're spraying it on very well. It gives a nice water-resistant coating. Very uh, good lubricating qualities. Lanolin is a product of sheep's wool, so it's a little less environmentally harmful. But you lube these things down once a year and you're pretty much good enough. This one's a little difficult to get to back here, but you can do it. Probably have to start the machine up and run it a little bit to run that chain around so you can get to all sides of it and spray it all down. It's really hard to get up in here. You can get to most of it but I'll get the rest of it later. This belt here is taking the power from one of the rollers down to the pickup wheel. So the belt provides some slippage. It's a spring-loaded belt, so it, it keeps automatic tension on itself. However, if you overload the pickup wheels on the front of the baler, say taking in too much hay or picking up a big stick or you know a rock or whatever, and you jam the pickup, 
you'll shred this belt rather than breaking any chains. This becomes the shear point. It's the, it's the thing that's disposable. Removing the side panel lets you access that belt. It's about a 33 inch long belt. Uh, can be bought at any auto parts store. Just bring along the old one for sizing. So uh, one thing I don't want to get a bunch of penetrating oil or any kind of lubricating oil on is this brake shoe right here or brake disc assembly. It doesn't look like much, but this is, this is very important for the proper uh, working of the baler. What happens is, as the baler is driving, uh, the timing mechanism, which is on the far side of the baler, which is what times the net wrapping cycle, is basically, uh, it has power to it, it has power to its shaft all the time, but it's not actually engaged. But that power shaft turning within the timing mechanism can slowly creep this this uh, disc around if you didn't have any brake shoes on it and what it would do is it would spontaneously just start net wrapping in the middle of rolling up hay and you'd have net wrap being wrapped in with your hay bale that's not a good thing obviously so they put this little tensioner on here it's just a couple little brake pads that are held in place by or, or pinched together by a little spring and nut and uh, I've got a little wrench in my pocket here it's a 10 millimeter this nut is accessed through the side panel. The side panel that covers this has a hole in it where this thing shows through. So if you ever have problems with the net wrap just spontaneously engaging for no reason, you never hit the net wrap lever, tighten this nut about a quarter turn and that'll take care of it. It'll stop that thing from creeping and engaging itself. I've already tightened this one, so I'm gonna back it back off. If you keep it too tight, you'll just wear the brake shoes prematurely. So now I'm going to go ahead and start this thing up, come back around here and look at the, the timing mechanism side of the thing here. Well, I'll start it up in a second. I'm going to say one more thing first. This, this little lever here, which protrudes out the front panel of the baler, this is accessed from the outside with the side panels all on it. This is the adjustment that sets how many uh, revolutions of net wrap you want on your bale. Pulling it out all the way gives you the most revolutions. It gives you three revolutions, or actually three and a half revolutions of net wrap on the bale. The middle position gives you about two or two and a half, and that one right there gives you just one and a half revolutions of net wrap. Obviously, the less net wrap you're using, the further a roll of this will go. Uh, but also the bale will come apart more easily if you're uh, handling the thing a lot. Most people run it in the middle position. That's where the machines are shipped, in the two and a half lap position. Uh, this, the, the geometry of this thing affects how many teeth this sprocket turns here at once. And you'll see that action once we get the thing started. So the nice thing about this baler is everything on it is completely mechanical. There's no electronics. There's no hydraulics, there's no mysteries. One piece of, you know, one sprocket drives another sprocket. Sometimes the power is shifted from one side of the baler to the other. They use the shafts going across the baler to carry power from one side to the other when they need rotational functions on one side or the other. But the fact is, once you trace where the power is moving and what's moving what, you can figure out anything that's wrong with one of these balers. It's not, it's not a huge mystery like some electronic machines would be where it's a circuit board, you know, what do you do with it? This is the shaft here that has constant power to it. And on the other side, it's the one that has the brake disc on it to keep it from turning. This is always rocking back and forth here anytime you're pulling hay into the front of the machine and bailing hay. When you engage the net wrapping cycle, which is done usually up at the handlebars for a squeeze grip on the steering control, uh, this mechanism kicks into gear. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that here. There's another lever to do it manually on the front of the baler here. And I'm gonna go ahead and kick that in. Now, since I'm not pulling hay in, I don't want this net wrap to start pulling down in there because it's gonna get tangled up in the rollers of the baler. So I'm gonna hold this thing back to keep it from turning. Now we've engaged this system here and cranking this around a little bit at a time until it finally reaches the culmination and kicks off. Now, I'm gonna run through that one more time and explain some of the functions. So, when I engage this, the first thing that happens, if you bring the camera around in front of the baler, the first thing that happens is that these rollers right
are the rollers that pull the net wrapping down so that the bale itself can grab onto the net wrap and pull it down off the roll. These rollers only stay engaged for a second, less than a second probably. They pull up, they pull down just enough net wrap that the hay bale itself can grab onto the net wrap and pull it down in there. So those will kick in for a second, then they'll kick out. The next thing that happens as it goes around is that it'll engage the net cutting cycle. This big knife or clamp across the front of the thing will, will actuate and clamp down on the net wrap to hold it in place while the hay bale actually clears the net wrap off. That, that actuation is by this shaft here. You see the shaft rotate and run through it. And finally, after the net wrap is cut, you'll see this lever here kick a little bit as a hand comes around on that same shaft and hits this thing on the inside and opens the baler's chamber door. So when the fully wrapped net bale can be ejected out the back. So it's all done off the same timing method. So I'm holding this net wrap because I don't want it to fall down. See the rollers kick in, kick out. It ran for just about a second. Now this thing is running. You see this thing kick here, and then that thing kicks. So everything's working perfectly on this thing. This is a manual release lever for the bale chamber door. When you pull on this, you can see, and simply if you watch this back here, that's the latch right there that holds the baler door shut. So when I open that, the door can open. Uh, doing the, if I want to open the baler door, it's a stretch. You can do it with one person. Like so. Otherwise, when there's a hay bale in there, it has pressure pushing out. So as soon as the automatic release mechanism kicks, that door is going to pop open. So you don't have to pull it open manually. We'll run through that baler function one more time. Rollers kick in, rollers kick out. It's now wrap, we're pretending it's wrapping the hay bale. Nice touch it, baler door open. You've got your bale. Now we're going to go over here and run some hay through it. You can see these functions in action. 